What's happened, you bad motherfuckers? It's Wednesday, July the 21st. The joint is brought to you, and I want to welcome to the podcast, Freeze Pipe. Listen, remember for years I've been telling you motherfuckers that when I lived in Colorado, I used to wake up in the morning and scoop fucking snow and put it in my bong, and it was tremendous. And then in L.A., we were putting ice cubes in our fucking bongs. And people are like, what the fuck is that? I've never seen that. Come on, guys. You know Uncle Joey's a fucking professional. Smoking weed doesn't have to hurt your lungs. With Freeze Pipe, you can get an icy cold hit every time. It comes with a detachable chamber. You freeze beforehand. That's how it works. The smoke passes through the frozen part and cools down the smoke as you inhale like a doctor. It's just like putting the ice cubes in a bong, but better. It's non-toxic, it freezes faster than water, and it stays frozen longer. Whether you hit it with a pipe, a bubbler, a bong, or a dab, they got it all. What you're looking at is the pipe and the bubbler. I got the bong for myself, you know what I'm saying? They got it all, but I got to at least have one of them. So if you can smoke from it, Freeze Pipe fucking makes it. So do me a favor. Go to FreezePipe.com and press in code Joey to save 10% off your first fucking order. Let me tell you something. These bongs are fucking tremendous. Get your bong, your pipe, or your bubbler today. I have not tried the bubbler or the pipe. I've tried the fucking bong with the frozen, and I got to tell you, it's fucking tremendous. So do me a favor. Go to freezepipe.com right now, pressing code Joey, and I'm going to save you 10% off your first order. That's freezepipe.com, pressing code Joey to save 10% of your order. If you're going to go deep, you might as well go deep with the freeze pipe. Whether it's a bong, pipe, or bubbler, you're gonna fucking see the devil. That's gonna be the fucking result. And it's perfect, cause you can put laughing gas in the fucking pipe and really get the fucking party started. So go to freezepipe.com right now, today, pressing code Joey, and save 10% off your first order. You might as well do something with that fucking government money, cocksucker. Get a bong. So you remember, we can call it Biden for all I give a fuck. Freezepipe.com, pressing code Joey. The joint is also brought to you by Upstart. Are you afraid to look at your credit card statement every month? When you're in debt, it can feel like a never-ending fucking cycle. Trust me, I was there for fucking 30 years. Upstart can help. Upstart is the fastest and easiest way to get a personal loan to pay off your debt. Listen, it sucks to be in debt. I was in debt till fucking 2009, till I got fucking married and it fucking sucked. And I had been in debt all my fucking life. Whether it's paying off credit cards or consolidating your debt, over a half a million people have used Upstart to get a simple fixed monthly payment. It's just five minute online rate check. This means they can offer a smarter rate to you with trusted partners. You can get approved the same day and you can receive funds as fast as one business day. Is If debt is taking over your life, it's time to get a fresh start with Upstart. Find out how Upstart can lower your monthly payments today when you go to upstart.com slash Joey. I know you're in debt. At least give it a fucking look. That's upstart.com slash Joey. Don't forget to use the URL to let them know I sent you. Got to throw in this in the disclaimer. Loan amounts will be determined based on your credit, income, and certain other information provided in your loan application. And now go to upstart.com slash Joey and get out of debt today. Uncle Joey's helping you get out of fucking debt. So do me a favor. Go to upstart.com slash Joey. Let's get this fucking motherfucker started. Started on a beautiful Wednesday morning. It's not beautiful. It's kind of raining out. There you go.
What's happening, you bad motherfuckers? It's Wednesday, the 21st of fucking July. It's been a beautiful day so far. I had to give some fucking blood this morning. You know how that goes. Fucking no drama. I got to be honest with you guys. No fucking drama at all. There was no fainting. I didn't even feel the needle. I always laugh because thank God my wife goes. Thank God my fucking wife goes. I'm sitting there. The lady was from another country. Who knows what country she was from. She was very sweet. And I told her when I go in, she goes, you're going to sit down? I go, I'm not sitting in that little fucking communist chair. You know, they have those little chairs like that you put, your, it looks like a school kid chair. You know, give it a fucking arm. I, I'm not fucking sitting on there, you know, because I'll fucking pass out. She goes, really? I go, yeah. So I tell everybody that right off the bat. I go, use a kid needle. Now I'm fine. I got my earphones on. I'm listening to fucking Def Leppard high and dry. I'm in fucking heaven. I'm thinking about 1982 and getting my dick sucked. And, you know, you're trying to think about great thoughts, you know. And I give her the arm. And all of a sudden, I can't hear her. You know, she's talking to me, but I can't really fucking hear her. And I don't give a fuck. And all of a sudden, I feel my wife closing my hand. But before she closes it, she makes like a noise. And next thing you know, she puts a bunch of tissues in my hand. And a bunch of tissues in this hand because I was sweating fucking profusely. In fact, I had my hand on my chest. And when I took it off, there was an imprint of my fucking hand from how much I was fucking sweating. So I love all that shit. I didn't even feel the needle go in. I can lie to you and tell you I didn't feel it. All of a sudden, I just felt to put my arm back. And I'm like, woo, thank God I'm gone. I was pissed because I didn't drink enough water because they usually make you piss in the cup. I get flashbacks to the halfway house. You know, I got to go in there and hide. I'm like, what am I hiding from? Nobody's watching me. So I fucking, you know, I, they didn't ask me to fucking uh, pee in a cup, which is good because I didn't have enough fucking fluid in me. You got to go to those blood tests with nothing in your stomach. And I take it. It's a nightmare not to wake up and eat. It's a fucking nightmare for a guy like me. And to put a needle in your arm with nothing in your stomach, it even makes it worse. But I fucking make it through. I don't know how the fuck I do it. So thank God that's over. I am actually feeling a lot fucking better, you know, than what I was. So that's fucking great. I took a tremendous shit this morning and it wasn't like a little I've been taking these little submarine shits for the last three weeks I'm like that's not my asshole that's somebody else's asshole I don't take these little they look like yodels you know you ever seen a yodel like the little chocolate things not this morning Jack everything came out you know what I'm saying my stomach was giving me a hard time for a few days I slowed up on the nicotine gum I started drinking a little KO pectate and boom I'm shitting like a fucking animal again you understand me put them out in the fucking stall but I'm a little pissed off because I found out the other day they're not going to be making Oreos in New Jersey no more. They're going to fucking outsource Oreos from Mexico. What the fuck is going on? Is Biden fucking up this much that even they took Oreos from fucking the United States and they're going to make them in Mexico now? I mean, I got nothing against the Mexicans. I love the fucking Mexicans. But this is bullshit. Oreo is an American fucking tradition. How the fuck are you going to outsource Oreos to Mexicans, this is not good, guys. This is what I'm talking about. This is what I'm fucking talking about. Uh, listen, I don't get pissed about fucking children at the border. I don't know. But taking Oreos from the fucking country? Jesus Christ. How un-American is that? First it was Chevrolet, then it was this. Now it's fucking Oreos? Those Oreos are going to be fucking cocained out, too. Those narcos are going to trick us and shit. They're going to sprinkle coke in them. They're going to have a different flavor to them. I'm, I'm not happy about this shit. I'm not happy about Oreos being made out of Mexico. Right away, you people going, oh, you, you fucking racist. I'm not fuck. I love fucking Mexican people. As a matter of fact, the podcast I'm doing today is I miss L.A. I do miss L.A. I miss different things about L.A. When I did the podcast with Lee a couple weeks ago, we talked about the hellish side of L.A. And I didn't exaggerate, you know. But there was some good in L.A., and I forgot to mention that, you know. I miss a lot of people, and it's not the people that you think I miss. You know, you people think I miss, like, the stars. I don't miss those motherfuckers at all. 
I miss the little guys. I miss Eric Rocha, my fucking gay buddy. I haven't made friends with a gay guy here. I don't hear no more fucking in the ass stories. I had a fucking guy with a hemorrhoid stories. I don't hear none of that shit no more. My life is boring now. I need another gay guy in my life. You know what I'm saying? He's raping guys. He's fucking making them eat hot dogs to prep them to suck dick. You know, I loved all those stories. It's fucking tremendous, Eric Roach. I miss him. It was Lee's birthday yesterday. I miss that little motherfucker, you know. Uh, I miss Steve Simone. I miss Eric Rocha, who's having surgery today, Wednesday the 21st. My heart goes out to him. Please stop by Eric Rocha's page and give him some love. I mean, he's one of my best fucking buddies of all time. I miss a lot of guys, Rodrigo. But the guy I'm going to have on the podcast today is a special fucking cat. Uh, We've been friends since I met him when they sent me to L.A. to do the tryouts for Latino Laugh Festival. Him and Marilyn Martinez were my first buddies in fucking L.A. And he was always great to me. From day one, he would yell out from the back of the room what jokes for me to say. He wanted to hear the dirtiest fucking jokes. He took me to all the Mexican rooms in South L.A. He introduced me to all the Mexicans as his brother. I mean, you know, when I cracked the Oreo cookie, it was just just a fucking joke, you know. No, it's not. I'm pissed off that Mexico's got it, but let's not even fucking discuss that right now. I'm not pissed at Mexico. They're just trying to make a decent buck, you know. Uh, He introduced me to all the Mexican fucking dudes. He showed me where all the great taco places were. You know, me and this cat must have done fucking a thousand shows together. Like that's, you know, he had a room on Tuesdays and Thursdays, on Tuesdays and Wednesdays that they gave me an open invite to. Like it was guaranteed $40 and a burrito. $40 and a burrito back then meant more to me than anything in the world. You ask any artist when he's fucking starving, what would he rather have, cash or quick meal and a fucking taco to go or something? And they'll tell you the food. I mean, the experiences I had... With this guy, were tremendous. Uh, if I look at my 30 years of comedy, he was in those 15 of those fucking years. You know, the guys that were the best to me, I think, in comedy were Mexicans. I had Jimmy Abeda in Denver. That guy got me started. That guy got me on the HBO tour. That guy fucking gave me two gigs a week. He fucking paid my rent, Jimmy Abeda. I, I will forever be grateful to him. But... Felipe Esparza was my fucking uh, original OG. I mean, I had him and George Perez and Rudy Moreno and Gilbert Esquivel. You know, Gilbert used to book the Laugh Factories on Monday night, Latino night. And even though the owner of the Laugh Factory was like, you're not ever performing in here today uh, anymore when I first got there. He wasn't out there on Monday nights at the Laugh Factory. So Gilbert would put me up on the sweetest fucking spot. Half the movies I got and half the TV shows I got were from the fucking Laugh Factory Latino nights on Monday night. And it would be me, Pablo, Felipe, Willie Barsena, Edwin San Juan, the lineups, Jeff Garcia, George Perez. The lineups were fucking deadly Latino night on Laugh Factory. But even... When I did my documentary, if you look at the documentary, it's executive produced by this guy you're about to see today. He's one of my tightest friends in comedy. I miss him with all my heart, and I'm happy he came on the joint. We talked. It's a very, if you're looking for fucking huge laughs, you're not going to get them. It's a, it's more of a heart-to-heart, two guys just bullshitting. It's the first time I saw him in 11 months, and it's it's a fucking pleasure, man, because I do miss him. You know, I talk a lot of shit, but I miss a lot of my old school friends from L.A. Yeah, I miss Rogan. I miss Red Band. I spoke to them this weekend. You know, Ari was down in Austin, so they called me. Kate is down there this week, so Red Band will call me again. Red Band went to my favorite restaurant in Austin and took a picture and fucking called me that night. And he goes, it's not what it used to be because of COVID. They don't have the same seafood. They have a limited fucking menu. He went to Papa Do's across from the Double Tree in Austin. That was my fucking spot for years. So I'm still talking to my tight buds. But this one today 
was extra special. We even, that night, after we finished the podcast, he called me back that night, and we chit-chatted for another fucking 45 minutes just about life and whatnot. I'm talking about Felipe motherfucking Esparza. He came to my wedding. I didn't go to his because I had a gate gig in Chicago. You know, he executive produced my special. When he won Last Comic Standing, he called me first from the stage, and he goes, nobody fucking knows, dog, but you and I did so many shows together. I got to tell you, I won Last Comic Standing. And I remember pulling over. I was on Melrose and, like, Fairfax, and I remember pulling over and actually, like, being so fucking happy for Felipe to win Last Comic Standing. He was part of the crew. You know, he would hang with me, Ralphie. We used to do acting classes on Tuesday, our own acting classes. I mean, you know, hard work is hard work, guys. And uh, this guy, I give him all the respect in the world. Enjoy Felipe Esparza, motherfuckers. I'll see you back here in, I don't know, 30 minutes. What up, fool? What's up, fool? How are you, my little brother of love? Chilling, man. What's up, fool? I can't call it. Just checking in with you. I got my Lakers shirt on out of respect for Los Angeles. You know how we do it, play. You know me. How you been? I've been great, man. How you been? Good. Trying to put the pieces together. Missing you. You know, thinking about you every time I see Narcos. Yeah, man. I, I see the Narcos. Sinaloan motherfuckers. I go, that's my boy, Felipe. Straight out of Sinaloa and shit. You been down there lately? No, I haven't been down there, man. But I, 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 I met one of the actors from Narcos at a pro, a, a movie premiere I, 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 for some movie I'm in. You know the cop that's playing um, one of the federal cops that's actually a good cop, and he's there when they're interrogating the guy who killed Camarena. I kind of remember. And, uh, and the doctor has been, uh, he's been um, tortured. He's telling that Mexican cop, he goes, you think these cops care about you guys? After this is done, I'm going after your families. That and was one of fucking the crazy. Cops, I met him. Yeah. That's a crazy ass fucking show. I love, uh, I love the first two seasons. I love Cali, but fucking Mexico was straight up gangster. The whole fucking Diego Luna. Yeah, man. I just fucking love He's a great actor. I just watched the scene the other night where he has to meet Pablo when Pablo kidnaps him and shit, and he tells him the hippopotamus don't like Mexicans and all that yeah. shit. It's fucking, it's like De Niro and Pacino sitting down in heat. That's two fucking strong actors. What else has been happening in your life? Not much, man. Going back on tour, I have a new tour coming up. It's the Unmasked Tour. I'm going to a lot of cities, man, starting next week. You're a bad motherfucker. Let me ask you something. You were the first person to do a Spanish special, correct? English Spanish, and Spanish. English, simultaneously on Netflix first. You were the first one because I, I read something last year, and I know you were pissed off. Somebody said this was the first Spanish fucking Netflix special, and you're like, fuck that. It was Felipe, Jack. Don't fuck me, forget me, it. It was me, baby. And I know but you've been acting. Yes, it was me, man. And um, hopefully there'll be more so we could do a, a Mexican-American comedy tour in a Latin country. That would fucking work. In South America and all those places, it would work. It's amazing. Yes, man, I would like to go somewhere on tour where I don't have to do a whole hour, you know? I'd like to just do my little 25 minutes and get the hell out of there. Maybe I could go on tour in Spanish with Tom Seguro or Jesus Trejo and hook up with Carlos Vallarta in Mexico and make it, get the party started. And you out there doing five minutes of hosting. And just go up and down Mexico. Just make sure you don't Mexico. fucking get mugged or shaken down. And You know, it was, it was really interesting to me when I saw the Rolling Stones documentary, Ole, Ole, Ole. Have you ever seen it? I haven't seen it. They did all of South America. And South America and Mexico are, are big markets for big rock markets. And roll, punk rock, heavy metal, and comedy. Yeah, if I had my like, fucking passport, I'd go to South America and drop some knowledge on those Venezuelans and shit. Man, you go to you wanna go to a, a badass punk rock 
concert, you go to you go to Chile, man. Chile has the biggest punk rock um convention in the whole wide world, man. Like all the bands that you that you grew up with that you might think, oh man, I wish I could go go see them. Like they're playing in Peru, man. Like the Ramones are huge over there, man. Huge. It's funny because when I watched that documentary, there was, I think it's Chile, where the Stones are fucking huge. Like huge, they have Stones man. clubs, you know, they, 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 it was just amazing. So I, I always thought about you when you did that tour to maybe do fucking South America, Colombia, you know, Venezuela, Costa Rica, the whole fucking thing. That's, that's just an option. Some people go to Australia, you know, you could go to fucking South America. I love to go to Australia, man. I've been dying to go to um, Auckland, New Zealand, man. I heard it's nice That's where I want to go over there, man. I want to get treated. I want to get treated with, by the Maoris, bro. The real, the, the, the other Mexicans, bro, in Europe. That's fucking I think the, the Maoris are badass, bro. Like New Zealand natives. A lot of those guys who are, are great actors, they go to America and play Mexican parts. Like the, have you seen that movie uh, with uh, Denzel Washington? Which one? When he goes, you re, you, you re got your sh you re got your shit pushed, man. Urgh. When he's that when he's um when um Training Day. Okay. Training Day when he's in when um that other actor um Ethan Hawke, he's he's about to get killed by the Mexican gangsters. The main one, the main leader of the of the of the Cholos. He, he's not even a Mexican. He's right. Not, I know you're talking Zealand. about. I know yeah. you're talking about. He plays a lot of space. He even played Pablo Escobar in Blow. In, in Blow, a badass movie. Bro. Yeah, yeah. He played Pablo Escobar in fucking Blow. How does it feel acting? I know you're digging it. You've been I doing love a lot it, of man. fucking shows and um, uh, movies and whatnot. What's going on with you? I'm in a movie right now with um, Omar Chaparro. He's a real big a Mexican actor from Mexico. And he's a comedian actor over there with millions of fans. And he did a movie in English called Seventh and Union. It's like the, it's like a rocky story, but with a Mexican in it. So it's kind of a day laborer in the morning. And he plays, he fights, he, he, he fights in bars at night. Like Clean Eastwood, bro, in every which way but loose. Like Charles right Bronson turn, in Hard right. Times. Yes. So he's fighting, man. And <clears throat> I mean, like, I mean, like his best friend at work. So every time he's at work, I'm in the scene. I'm in a lot of scenes, man. Like when the movie was shown at the Chinese theater, when it started, I was very surprised to see um, when, when, when all the credits started. And then at the end, it said, and Felipe Esparza. You dig that, huh? Do you remember Hell when we yeah, used to man. do mock acting classes behind my building? Yes, man. It was me, you, Cisco, Rodrigo, and Rick Ramos. How fucking crazy is that? We used to do. Bro, we would get high, and then Cisco would get mad because his son was there. Nobody told you to bring him, cocksucker. That's right. Cisco would bring his fucking <laughs> son there. That's right. And then we're Cute all, I remember we were all doing the scene, of um, which is the real... Hard, you will give us the hardest scenes to do, bro, for young actors. Like the scene you gave us was the one where, where it, it was Bronx, it was Bronx with um, it was um, fuck, I can't even remember. It was um, the movie with Al Pacino, where Al Pacino's a gangster. He's um, Alito's way, and um, what's the name? Um, Johnny Depp. He's a cop. Wow. I thought I and gave you Carlitos. They're part work. of the Bonanno family. He, he infiltrated oh, the Bonanno uh, family. Oh, Donnie Brasco. Donnie Brasco, yes. Donnie Brasco, the, the, okay. The scene where Al Pacino's son, he, he, his son OD'd again. That's right. And um, you were playing Al Pacino, and, I, and we were playing Johnny Depp, and we were taking alternating turns, and you were trying to get us to take an emotion that his son is Odin for the third time already. Not the first time. First time he was sad, but this is the third time. He's still fucking sad, you were telling us, but he's angry too. You were trying to relate that emotion, but we were fucking high, man. We used to get high on Tuesdays because yeah. the guy at that fucking weed store on Tuesday would make the edibles fresh. He was a chef. 
Yeah, and he man. would make chocolate, and he would hook us up, just give us stuff. And I still remember the day we had to carry Rodrigo into the car. His legs were fucking, his legs were dragging like that Quentin Tarantino when they walked him out of El Compadre that night. They Two Mexicans walked out Quentin Tarantino, and his legs were fucking dragging on the floor, and they basically just put him in his car and closed the fucking door. I don't know what happened to Quentin after that. Maybe he ended up at Harvey Weinstein's house. Who the fuck knows? He was on Rogan last week talking a bunch of fucking nonsense. Fuck him. Nonsense. I can't stand Quentin Tarantino. I really can't. He, I hate making, his fucking movies. Bruce Lee look bad. I'm trying to make Bruce Lee look bad. I fucking hate his movies. His movies are always like there's a guy like Wink Wink. It's just Hollywoody and shit. If you're going to fucking tell me that that Tarantino dude didn't know about Harvey Weinstein and what he was doing... You're fucking full of shit. They all fucking knew. So I, I don't even, I've never even watched that fucking movie about Hollywood. I never watched the Django Unchained. I didn't, I stopped watching his shit 15 fucking years ago. He got on my last nerve. So people were yeah, all impressed because he was on Rogan last week fucking telling lies. Fuck him. He could suck David Chase's fucking dick. But David Chase forgot. Quentin Tarantino don't know. Kill Bill. He stole that from fucking, uh, what's the other guy that came after Bruce Lee that was a savage? Sonny Chuck Chiba. Norris. Sonny Chiba. Chiba. Nobody remembers Sonny fucking Chiba movies and shit. Bro, he so had he, that Sonny one Chiba movie that movie, was wild. He was like fucking badass, bro. He was like Die Hard before Die Hard. Fuck yeah. Sonny Chiba put out one, like four or five movies, but there was one of them that was just fucking ultra-violent. I got to look it up. I used to do the martial arts uh, movie segment for National yeah. Lampoon years ago. So I had to look all those fucking movies up. To Shiro Mifuni and fucking Sonny Chiba. And that's where he got killed Bill from. He stole fucking yeah. all the bits from those even, guys. Um, he, he even put Sonny Chiba at the, in his movie as a sword maker, right? He was a sword maker in that movie. That's right. That's right. Yeah, but, but Sonny Chiba first... When when Quentin Tarantino first introduced him, like we didn't already know, was in that movie True Romance, a movie that he wrote but didn't direct. It was directed by that bad motherfucker, bro. What's his name, man? He, he, their brothers, one of them died. Ridley Scott. Okay, so a True Romance is a Quentin Tarantino written movie. Yes, but that uh, one Ridley I, that Scott, one I like. That's a good fucking he, he, movie. He direct he directed it. But he cut up all of um, Quentin Tarantino's lines because the movie was full of um, full of Quarantino lines. Like, remember that scene where um, when um, Christian Slater walks in to to grab his Rosanna Arquette suitcase because uh, what's his name is there? Uh, Gary Oldman is there playing like a like a black guy that, that wants to be white, yeah. a wigger, yeah. And he goes in there, man. He goes, well, "How come you don't sit down? I don't sit down because." That I already seen this movie is is a Mac with Pam Greer and Richard Pryor, you know I already saw this movie, but the original line was, I, I don't want to watch this movie because I, it's Pam Greer and Richard Pryor, and he gets into a long unuseful dialogue about cinematography. On oh, the cinematography was this, and that movie was shot with this type of lights, you know all that bullshit lines. That Kevin Smith likes to do also, like in Clerks. Yeah, nonsense. Yeah, yeah. The, nonsense. They dialogue. love to talk. They love like he likes talking. to give you a movie history. I don't need a movie history. Give me good dialogue. Fuck movie history. I don't want to know where the movie was made and during while the movie is being made. Just give me the fucking movie, man. Who's gonna shoot who? I don't want to know that when the movie was made. There was good lighting. The sound man was the Oscar-winning sound man. Fuck all that, man. Get to the dialogue, eh? This is your day. make my day, motherfucker. Clean Eastwood style. Yeah, and the least is the better. The least you say is the fucking better. I hate fucking. I got offered this mob movie that it would have taken me two years to learn my lines. <laughs> it would have taken me two fucking years. The guy hit me up and he's like, he hit me up in July. Uh, it's going, it's going. Then he hit me up December 8th. He's like, this is the week I need you in New York. I go, for fucking scale, New York, December 8th in the winter, a movie uh, with Val Kilmer, and that's it. I'm not, I'm not fucking wasting my time. I, I'm, I'm never going to learn this dialogue. 
It was I know chunks. what movie you're talking about. You do? I saw a trailer for that movie. That movie has everybody. Val Kilmer. It has Big Pussy. Big Pussy It has uh, Michael and that guy from uh, Doogie Hauser, that little Italian guy. It has everybody in it. Oh, book. Benny. I Benny. I just did uh, a thing with him in New York. We played detectives. Yeah. I, I saw the movie. Benny. You, you said no to it. That movie has everybody in it, man. But I still don't know what it's about. Yeah. They, it was. Listen, when you send me a mob script and I see Gino... Tony or the name yeah. Anthony, I turn it down. I turn it right. I turn it down just by reading the first five pages, because if you're still making those type of movies, they're just not fucking gonna go. The Sopranos oh, covered everything. You Me know? too, man. Like I don't turn down movies because I don't get offered too many. But I kind of like I have one eye. I'm listening with one eye already shut, without even looking at it like this. Like, like I know that I know that that's not gonna work. You know, right now, I know that that tra that type of movie is not going to work right now. When there's a page called "Fools Gone Wild," and they created that page on themselves, and now they're doing concerts with that type of comedy with millions of followers, and you're trying to come up with this Latino movie with a message for everybody. Let me tell you, man, we got to start make stop making Mexican American films or any Spanish film with a message at the end. We don't want a message. When I watch Die Hard, there's no fucking message. You know what the message was? I should have bought more popcorn. You know what I mean? All these the movies, man, they would have had more fucking guns. With Latinx. Go ahead. I should have had more guns. That's what he should have had in fucking Die Hard. <laughs> yeah, we want a movie with Danny Trejo wearing a cave shooting people. That's it. I can't. Remember the movie we did where the guy put a fake mustache on me? Oh, my God. Because you shaved. I shaved. I didn't know I had a fucking... I couldn't grow a mustache if you fucking paid me, okay? And he fucking... Yeah, he made me the sheriff with a fucking shitty mustache. That director was the biggest waste of time, Felipe. That was like... That was definitely a fucking hand And job. money, too. The money wasn't bad, he, right? No, he wasted money on stuff that, that we didn't need to, like... Honestly, Joy, me, you... Nick Torturo and two other people that we had to hire a stunt coordinator to do the stuff that we were doing out there. Nah, it was a fucking nightmare. The only good thing Remember about the, the that movie was... Remember that guy was taking an hour teaching us karate moves? Yes, that's right. <laughs> that was terrible. Terrible. I fucking hated and, all that shit. The only thing that it, came out of that movie was David Proval. We got him high. Oh, my God. Dude. Jackie April. We fucking... <laughs> Turned them on to edibles and shit. He came the next day. Where do I get a marijuana card? I just talked to him about a year ago. It was like, thank God for turning me on to that shit. My life changed. That was funny because um, the the director made him a made him a French guy in a movie when this guy plays Italians <laughs> everywhere. And then and then um, oh, he goes French guy. How do I do? How the fuck am I do a French accent? Smoke some of this. We gave that was them, the uh, day that we got high all day because they couldn't find Paul Rodriguez. That's right. Paul was MIA and shit. They had to go to his house and jump the fence and get him and shit. How's he doing? Is he better now? He's doing good, man. I haven't spoken to him, but we have the same agent, and I see that he's getting back on the road. Okay, yeah, because he was in the hospital for a while, wasn't he? Yeah, he was in the hospital. Something was wrong with him. He drank shit, bad water. He was, it's funny, he was dehydrated, and... Um, he had just came from a rally where he was fighting for water for the farmers. And he was dehydrated. Yes. Fucking tremendous. Instead of fighting for the fucking farmers, he should have drank a glass of wine, of water. What I opened fuck? up. I opened up for him. Him and I. Let me tell you, man. Him and I did a show, and um, you know when I started stand up comedy, the Latino comedians that were headlining were only George Lopez and. Carlo Mencia and Paul Rodriguez Paul, and uh, Paulo Francisco. Paul. Everybody else was featuring and barely headlining, but those guys were headlining. And um, I remember opening up for Paul Rodriguez in Reno, California, Reno. And he calls me up, you know, like busting my balls. And he, cause he found out that I was arguing with somebody, I guess, somewhere else. Somebody told him, you know, a comedian try to rat you out so you won't open up for somebody. Maybe he'll take me. You know, so... He calls me up and he goes, what is this you complaining about 
your hotel was too small, your airplane seat was horrible, it was bad weather. And he goes, I wasn't really complaining about nothing, man, what's wrong with your ass? And he goes, you start complaining once you see my room, and he hung up. I opened I for him to, with Mark Babbitt. Remember Mark Babbitt bro, from the Houston? I remember the, fir you were, the first time I, you met Mark Babbitt, I remember because part, I think I'm, you might have met Willie Barcena for the first time. And um, he, he, he kept talking, to, Willie kept talking about how you and Bar Mark Babbitt hit it off right away. I liked Mark Babbitt. Mark Babbitt, too. Uh, Mark Babbitt. He was the first guy I ever sent a blank tape to. Like he told me to send him a tape to open up for Bobby Slayton. And I kept telling him, I ain't sending you a tape. I kept sending him rosters from the comedy store. I go, why would I send you a tape? I follow Paul Mooney every night. If you can't live with that, go fuck yourself. He's like, listen, I really want to book you, but I need a tape. So I sent him a blank tape and he called me right away. He goes, your tape was tremendous. You're working with Bobby Slayton. That was the first. I swear to God, I sent him a fucking blank tape. Till this day, he probably didn't watch it. Because you ever go to a manager's office to get paid? What do they got behind them? A bunch of blank tapes with dust on them. They don't look at them. A bunch of dust, a dust off, dust on them. And then whatever year you're there, a lot of young comics that are probably famous now are there collecting dust. Look at all the fucking people we we watch blow up, Felipe. I watched you blow up. You know, I mean, we go back to 97 at the fucking Brave Bull with Rudy, and I watched you Rudy. blow up. I remember you still calling me from the set of Last Comic, telling me I fucking did it. You know, I, I saw you won. fucking blow up. Put them to shame. We, won. we saw Tiffany Haddish blow up. Fucking Tiffany was nothing. She was walking around the last factory going on the road with Red Band. Tiffany was on my year, bro. Tiffany had, watch, top 40. Here are the top 40 people of, that are big now that were on Last Comic Standing, 2010, season seven. They made it mainly, made, probably it was top 20, but this was top 40. Tiffany Haddish was on my top 40. Cristela Alonso was my top 40. Little Rail, bro, Little Rail was top 40. Um, oh, that one writer from New York, man, he's very funny. He writes for Amy Schumer. He, he got into a little trouble. He, he's so funny, man. He was top 40. Hell yeah, man. I gave him edibles in my fucking hotel room. Who were the finalists the year you made it? I would have never thought I made it, man. But who were the finalists that year that you beat out? Or top 10? Top ten, five. The five was the top five was yes. um, me, Tommy John again, Mike Kaplan, Roy Woods Jr., and Mike DeStefano. Rest in peace. Wow, Mikey DeStefano, bro. Mike DeStefano, like he was killing it on on the tour, bro. Like, like I'm glad he was third and not second place because he was like getting standing ovations. With he was strong, bro. And um, Tommy John again couldn't follow him. So by the time um, he would go af after after Mike, Tommy would try to do like 18, 20 minutes just to get some heat going, you know, because he would leave a lot of heat behind, bro. It was like following you, bro, when you're hot. You know, when you're hot, come on, bro. When you do a, a, a tight 20, nobody in the world can follow you. That's Your hot crazy. 20 is, uh, in, you, you even told me. My, if you have a high, hot 15, hot 20, you're unstoppable. The rest of the 25 will come naturally. Oh, yeah. The first 18, I'll fucking knock it out of the park. I don't fuck around. Those comedy store sets, they make you fucking savage. So if you're going to give me 18 minutes and you're going to fuck, because I'm going to condense 40 into 18, <laughs> I'm not going to shut the fuck up. I'm just going to keep coming at you until you can't take it no more. You know, that's why I hated, I hated headlining. Because you got to oh, do man. 45 fucking long minutes. You got to space out your jokes. So I would have to write like an hour 20 to really kill on a headlining set because I want to machine gun them to death. I want to machine gun them, take a breather, step back, let them get some air, let them take a sip of the drink, and then go in there again, step back at the 32-minute mark, 33-minute mark, give them another breather, and then just bring it on fucking home like Pete Rose in the All-Star game. 
when he yeah. knocked that dude down. That's it. I just want to bring it the fuck home. That's why I haven't been going on the road because I don't have that type of material anymore. I got to start all over from fucking Ooh. scratch. So I just been taking my time podcasting, fucking around, spending time with my daughter. You know, it's nice. So it's fucking hot here. It's starting to get humid. So I don't want to do comedy outside. I don't want to do dick. I know what you what you mean. Of, that's very important. So anybody listening here who is a young comic and you're worrying about it, I should get an hour. No, bro. Forget the hour. Go for the 120. Because everybody that has a tight 45, it's the tight 45 when the crowd is hot. You know, when it's packed. That's a tight 45. Perfect. But there's going to be times when there's gonna, the crowd ain't going to be hot. And you're going to go through that 45 minutes in 30 are you going to go through that one hour in 30 minutes? I've been there, man. You, I've you been, been there, too. Three. Remember that one time you came back with that sad story? What happened? I tried to do your material. They didn't want it. <laughs> I gave them Freddy, I gave them some Willie Barsana. They said, fuck no. I gave them Freddy Soto. They said, fuck you and his dad. <laughs> it's crazy when you're up there. Like, you know what the thing was with guy, like guys with me and you? And it pisses me off a lot because people don't get it. I hate when people go to me because I was one of those guys. And it was a big mistake I made. It's like, hey, man, I got 45. Listen, there's a big difference between having 45 and there's a big difference between being a headliner. You know, like I took a year, I took a year where every Thursday I would go to Irvine and watch the headline. I wouldn't say hello to him. I wouldn't even let them know I was there. And the best three headliners I saw that year at Irvine were Patrice O'Neill, Greg Giraldo, and Ralphie May. Ralphie May knew how to fucking headline. He was a headliner for a long time. I remember the first time I started headlining, I wasn't a headliner. I remember eating a bag of dicks, the Columbus Funny Bone, for like the first three weeks of that tour. I just ate a bag of dicks. And then you put it together. You learn how to headline. You learn how to, you know, fucking be presentable. And then, remember, a lot of guys don't like when they drop checks. I love when they drop checks. That's what my dick gets hard. Because I got to bring them out of the fucking abyss. Because they just looked at the tab and go, who the f $96, who drank the Long Island? So there's always that little lull in the audience when they yeah. get their tabs. There's a lot of comics that don't like the tabs drop while they're on stage. They want they, the, they, they hate it. They hate it. I like it. They get it. thrown off. It's another challenge. It's just another challenge. And now you get to run them for fucking 10 minutes. Like, that's that break I like. That 34-minute that mark when they drop those checks. Oh, that's when I start sipping water. Without them seeing, I slip a fucking that's edible. That's the home stretch. That's the home stretch. Nobody even knows. I got my little edible right there. I know I'll be high by the time I get to the hotel room and I'll just pop it without them knowing it, like making believe I'm drinking. A lot of times I just put it in the fucking water and drink the I'll water. It just, it just melts in the fucking water. And those last 12, 13 minutes, I want them to be fucking heat. Like I told these guys, I said, you know what? You want me on the road? I'll charge you 40 bucks and I'll go out there and improvise. And it's a 50-50 show. You know, you might leave happy or you might leave depressed. I rather go out when I got a fucking good hour of what's going on with my life, and that's what I'm doing now. I'm trying to live my life so I can come up with a new fucking hour. So when the Soprano movie comes out, at least I can travel New Jersey, Pennsylvania, D.C., you know, around here. I'm not getting on no fucking planes, Felipe, for a while. No. I'm, I'm worried about Bro, you don't want to be on a plane. I was on a plane last week on American, and everything was going great. I, we were flying from Atlanta to Philadelphia, and um, we stood in a tarmac for two hours and 45 minutes, and it was getting hot. And yeah, uh, that's, no. the captain kept coming up with excuses. You know how they, they come up with excuses? He goes, oh, we're checking in for the this bad weather in Philadelphia, man. It's very foggy. Then uh, an hour later, uh, we're about to drive, go down a, a runway, and Southwest took our drive, our, our turn. Really? Southwest cut you off on the runway? How does fuck the later, Southwest cut off American? Southwest I know. Who, is who a step above fuck? fucking Greyhound. I was saying, bro. 
If What's Southwest next? tries to cut Frontier in front of me, I'm like, get the you? fuck back. The fucking Southwest. Little dog, I flew a couple weeks ago. I had to go to California. Uh, I was so angry, bro. I had to go to California to close the weed deal. And let me tell you something. I couldn't even find a direct flight back. Everything is connecting. They got to be bullshitting you because they're saying that there's a million travelers a day, but they don't have. Look, you had to go all the way to Atlanta to get to Philly. Yeah. So there was no direct flights to Philly or they were too expensive? There were none. 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 So how the fuck are a million people flying? You can't even get to it. Like when I came back, I tried JetBlue from Burbank because they got a Burbank to fucking Kennedy. They shut that line down. There's no more Burbank to fucking Kennedy out of Burbank. So they were both. There was only two direct flights on JetBlue that day. Everything else was connecting. You got to go to Boston, sit for two hours until your ass grows roots and your hemorrhoids fucking back up. And then you got to. I'm not doing it. I don't want to lose my luggage. You know, if, if fucking there's no employees. Last time I flew somewhere, when I came back on the way there, I got my luggage quick. But when I got to Newark, I waited a fucking hour for my luggage. So I'm done with that shit. I'll relax this summer, wait for it to get back to normal. People are throwing fits on airlines. They are, man. Every day there's an unruly guy that don't want to fucking put a mask on. You know, fuck that. I'm not going to play karate chop on a fucking plane with nobody, you know. I know, man. We were tra- when we were traveling, Rachel Wilson, she was sitting next to this chubby man. You know, real Midwestern man, and his mask kept—he kept, he was snoring, and his mask kept coming up when he was snoring, and his mask was full of like his saliva already. It was just coming off in garlic. And Rachel Wolfson was trying to move seeds. They told her no. No, they won't let you move. They won't let you do shit. So no, you know what, man? It's a little wild out there right now. So I'm pretty cool. I'm worried about you guys going out, but you're fucking, you've been doing this for 30 fucking years. You're a savage, plus yeah. you're a tough guy. You'll smack somebody. You got a good crew with you. You got my man, Rodrigo. You got Rizzo. You got Rachel. You know, so Rachel, it's fucking... Chuck Bartel. Now we have Gabby Lam, Lammy. Okay. We got Butch Escobar, too. How's Butch doing? He's good, man. He's living in Berkeley. He's raising his son, you know, with him by himself with his his um, baby mama. They take they take turns, you know. It's tough, and I know you got your daughter now, and you got your grandchild oh, yeah. living with you. So my heart. Yeah, goes my out daughter. Um, my daughter's going through chemo, so I take her son in the morning. I take him to school, and I bring him back. It's like being a dad again. You enjoying it? Oh, I, I love it, man. Um. My son is, well, my grandson is two. He, he doesn't know how to say grandpa. He just yelled out, she shot. And, you know, Joey, man, is like, like I, I took my kids to school, but I, I guess I was never around, you know, with their moms to hear stuff like about my son at school, you know. But, man, when you have a grandson or a two-year-old, my son is in, Montes- he's in Montessori school, Right. Daycare from seven to six, but I pick him up at three. Man, every day they, they tell you something bad that he did. Like, you know, your son bit like five kids today. Or your son pulled somebody's hair. Finally, like I, I, a month later, the teacher came up to me really sad. I thought they were gonna kick him. I thought they were gonna kick him out of the school already, because they already got like three warnings. He bites someone else, this two-year-old is out of the school. So she tells me a little girl bit his uh, a little girl bit your son, and I was like, "Oh, thank God, he, my son is getting better. They're biting him now." <laughs> it's fucking crazy. And your little grandson lives with you? Yeah, he lives with um my daughter. They live like um two blocks away, so they live, they live close. But we're right now we're gonna tear down our garage and make him a little tiny home next door. So they could come in and out of our house. Good for you. And I would have to go pick them up, yeah. You know, Felipe, and that was my thing too. My daughter just turned eight. We just moved back here. She's discovering a whole different fucking world. She's a different kid. You know, today she started camp. She left here with a cowboy hat this morning. I, I didn't even know what the fuck to say. She just gave me a kiss. I told her, what's up with the hat? She goes, it's cowboy day. 
whatever, you know, what am I going to do? And I want to watch it grow up. I want to be here for a few years locally. You know, she uh, sat me down like two years ago, not even uh, right before the pandemic. She's like, I don't like when you leave, you know. I left her like a Valentine's Day present. She's like, it would have been better if you would have gave it to me personally. So, you know what, man? I've been doing this. I mean, Felipe, I met you in 97. And we were out seven nights a week, Felipe. Last I fucking Seven checked. nights a week. We were out eight nights a week. You know, uh, Monday, the Laugh Factory. Tuesday, you and Willie had the room. Wednesday, Al Coyote with the twins. You know, yes. with the fucking, you always give me a burrito. That was my dinner. And, and Sunday potluck for the and drugs. Sunday potluck. And, you know, I mean, we have been fucking fighting for our lives for years. How long have you been doing comedy in the total right now? Since um, 95. Wow. 27 years. 24 so I, years. I started four years before you. So when I met you, you were in comedy years, two yes. years. That's what you're telling me when I met you in 97. Yeah, when I met you in 97, I had started, I had a, 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 I already had a TV credit because Jeff Valdez had Latino Night, Latino Showtime Laugh Festival with um, a bunch of comics. So I did that. But at 90, my son was born in 93, 4, and I had quit comedy. So yeah, like late 93, bro, like a lot of years, 27 years. But headlining and making money and having fun. I've always had fun, though, but I'm actually taking it serious, 2010. Me too. <laughs> Feeling like a headliner, 2013. Yeah, I think I started because I, 2009, I got married and I was like, you know what? I'm going to give comedy a break. Maybe I'll get a job selling cars. And then the podcast world started and we started podcasting. And next thing you know, you know, tickets are selling. So... We had to adjust to what was coming in. You know, I didn't think that I was ever going to go back on the road. And like I talked to my agent yesterday, we were like, we did a hell of a fucking run. You know, we got all the way to the fucking Chicago theater and sold out two shows. We sold out two shows in New York at the theater. So it was a great run. I'll tell you what, if it's up to me, I don't want to do theaters no more. I want to go back to the brick wall. Brick wall. You know, the theaters were a little too rough for me. I don't like taking that Saturday fucking plane. My back is killing me. I'm too fucking old. I like relaxing on Saturdays. So when I go back, I'm just going to go out Fridays and Saturdays. Four shows. Get me the fuck out of here. Abandon yeah, ship. Man. Or do Wednesday nights. Like I'm, I'm thinking of doing a residency in Atlantic City or at the Count Basie Theater. And it would just be like once a week or something. You know, I'll start doing guest sets like in August, maybe, because I'm feeling better. So I might as well fucking go for it and shit. Are you still on Super Show, whatever, on NBC, or they canceled that? They canceled Superstore after five seasons, but I'm in um, the last season, five episodes. They Damn. gave me uh, a lot of episodes, bro, and um, we'll see what happens after that. But speaking of shows, um, you're right about theaters, because I've been going to Portland to do the Revolution Hall. You know, but last year I went to Helium to do like three shows, four shows for a hundred people, like during the pandemic. But I'm going back and I'm going to be there Thursday through Sunday at Helium in like in November. So, yeah, man, I always wanted to be in Portland more than one day, you know. Portland, Portland is, is fun. That's a great comedy club. I got to give you that. The lady who runs Helium Portland is fucking tremendous. They got tater tots, they got a spicy ranch. I don't even like ranch fucking dressing. They got mm. a red spicy ranch dressing that they put on the tater tots. It'll make your asshole fucking open up and down. It's fucking tremendous. You know what I'm saying? So uh, I like Portland, but there's a lot of shit going on in Portland. So you got to be crazy. You got to be yes. careful. You got to be careful because I think they're only doing like six o'clock shows. You got to be yes. in by 10 o'clock or something like that. I think I was there. I was there, bro, when they were th when they had curfews. They had, a, they had to stop selling yeah. alcohol at 9 p.m. Yep. And we were at 100 people per show. It was Edwin, San Juan, Rodrigo, and I, and uh, Martin Rizzo. Bro, right outside the Helium Comedy Club, somebody crashed an SUV and broke in there, and everybody ran off with bicycles. Every oh, night, they we were the there, there was a place. fire somewhere. 
So we didn't yeah, really man. go out, bro. We just stood in. There was a there was a little weed shop across the street from my hotel room. And there's we a weed shop there. right around the corner from the club. Yes. That's really good. They tell you to go over there when you get to the club. So I used to go over there, buy like fucking lurch weed and then hang out. Dog, I fucking set the fire alarm off at the Portland Helium. <laughs> the fucking <clears throat> Felicia was up on stage and all of a sudden you heard blah, blah, blah. They were like, fucking 20,000 comics have come here and smoked dope. You're the one that sets off the fucking fire alarm. What the hell is wrong with you? I, I loved it. I got the reputation. Fuck them. Hell yeah, man. Gotta do something. You still going to acting classes? Every, I have acting class today, four to five, with Deborah Lemon. I go there every week, bro. Every week I go to an acting class. I know. You you, you stuck with it for a while, and I'm really proud of you, Felipe. Yeah, I got to tell you, man. I was watching Narcos the other night. I was thinking about you. It was too late to call you. The next day, you called me. And then I was fucking, you know, it was 4th of July weekend. I had my daughter, pools, parties, you know. And then I called you back, and I felt bad because you were at Soul Joe's. I would have fucking brought you some weed, an edible something, yeah. give you a hug, you know. So next time you're in this before, give me a call during the week. Because if you I'll call you me know. Friday afternoon, I'm with fucking, I'm surrounded by eight sets of parents and, uh, you know, you're still smoking? Still smoking, still eating edibles, shrooming every once in a while with chocolates. Every when people give them to me. Those are good. Those chocolate covered fucking, I just ate some in New York when I shot, I shot a TV show and one of the ushers, I gave him weed and he goes, hey, I got something for you. He gave me a little piece of chocolate covered mushrooms. I had to drive. I didn't feel it. But fuck it. I don't feel a lot of fucking things. You know what I'm saying? I'm getting too old. I ate half of one and I watched um, Clothing Counters for the first time. Who in concert? That movie, Clothing Counters of the Third Kind. I never okay. seen it before. Yeah, that's a good movie. I haven't seen it in fucking 30 years. So, <laughs> Where's your tour start? My tour starts um, in a couple. It actually starts this week at the 10 p.m. prob. And then we're going to hit up by Celia. Modesto, Monterey, Salinas, all, all kinds of places. Not some some shows we don't we, we don't have dates for like Chicago, no dates, but they're they're coming, man. Check them out at Felipe'sWorld.com tour. But this week I'll be at the Tempe Improv, and then the following week I'll be at the Addison Improv. So look out for those shows. Listen, man, uh, I got to be honest with you. There's a lot of people I don't miss. In L.A., you know what I'm saying? Like, there's a lot of people I don't miss. I don't miss none of the fucking stars. I don't miss none of the douchebags, but you're one guy I miss. You know, I talked to Rodrigo a couple fucking days ago. I checked in with him. Uh, I miss Steve Simone. I miss Jerry Rocha, you know. I miss the fucking, our little crew, you know. Rodrigo's a good man, but most importantly, I miss you, man. I'm happy you're doing well. And I'm happy you're still in acting class, and I'm happy you're still fucking telling these motherfuckers to suck your dick your way. You don't give a fuck. We've Hell done yeah, it the man. same way for 40, 30 fucking years. What was the name of the club on Tuesday nights we used to go to? Where I would That's talk about Coke. No, that was Fly's Room. Yeah, the one on you Tuesday and Willie nights? had that they cleaned out and they turned into a car lot. Oh, All man. the way out there. You guys had a Tuesday and a Wednesday for a while. Well, that was, that was, that was, um, shit, Wild that Coyotes was, um, is Wednesday. It was Wild Coyotes on Wednesday, and that place was called, um, Daily Planet on Tuesday. And, Daily um, Planet on Tuesday. Uh, Southgate. Southgate. 18 and over. That's right. Casa Latina was Tuesdays. That was Fly's yeah. Room where they gave you tacos. Yeah. Uh, Ernie G Wednesday had the was, fucking Mambo Room when, up at Universal. Monday nights. Monday nights. Was the Mambo Room and the Laugh Thursday Factory. Thursday was Commerce Casino. Thursday was Commerce Casino. Listen to the fucking lineup we had, gentlemen. And then you still had the comedy store late night. We had Commerce. And then Gilbert had a room in not Long Beach, but wherever he's from. Where's Gilbert Esquivel from? There's he's from Wilmington. Wilmington. 
He had the BFW he and had a the, Street. That lady sold the, the taco, best fucking tacos. The best fucking tacos in the world for 50 cents. He would pay me 50 bucks and I would eat $50 worth of tacos at 50 fucking cents a taco. I remember I brought my drug dealer down there with me one time. Dante. Dante. I was up on stage and while I came off, he, he came back with two plates of fucking tacos. He goes, man, these tacos are fantastic. I'm like, fuck it. I went and got 50 of them, and we fucking tore them down. I I used to call Gilbert just to book me in that room so I could get the tacos. Yeah, I that missed. was, a, that was on, the, the, the tacos. That's on PCH and Third Street, by the way, if anybody wants to know. Wow. I don't know if they're still there by now. That was 15 fucking years ago, but I loved... You know, man, the, the, the Spanish, the Mexican community opened up their fucking arms to me, and it was because of you, and I'll never forget you because of that. You turned me on to King Taco, the chorizo and mashed potato fucking, no, 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 the chicharrones. Yeah, chicharrones. And mashed potato fucking burrito with the security guard there. It got to the, the point green where- Green burrito. Yeah. That was a green pork burrito you should get oh. with the green sauce on top and the cheese. And they had like oh. big chunks of beef inside. People wonder why I got so big in the longest yard. It was because of fucking Felipe in his Mexican <laughs> rooms. Every fucking night on the way back, I would stop at King Taco, man, and get a taco there and a taco to eat on the way to the fucking comedy store. That's when you know you're a fat fuck. But hey, bro, you ever my- wonder why King Taco has so many security guards? Like They all have yeah. pistols. You thought it was a bank. What about the night we almost got janked in Stockton? Oh, Remember man. The, the guy told us to get in the car with him. We that had was, money. First of all, it was a bad night. That was yeah. the, the day the Raiders lost to the fucking Patriots on the no tuck rule. So everybody at that stadium, everybody at our show was a fucking Raider fan. And these black dudes were angry, angry. And they all, they all wanted to take us to the strip bar. They did. They were going to fight. And I remember they all they wanted to give us drugs. They all wanted to take us everywhere. They did give us drugs. They didn't give me coke. They gave me a fucking gram of meth. And you, me, and Rodrigo sat in the room with the door open, and I must have smoked 80 cigarettes. I, I go, I thought it was coke. It was fucking speed. My jaw was going. I was sweating. My dick went into my nutsack. It shrunk, and it went in. All that was hanging was a little flap from the uncircumcision. It looked like a fucking wind flap. It was terrible. What a horrible night. I was so embarrassed in front of you guys. I could smoke a cigarette man, uh, after cigarette. You were, you were fucking, uh, we were watching that movie, Mi Familia, with yes. Issa Morales. Yes. When the little kid walks out and he goes, pinche mayates or whatever, pinche huevos. Pinche gringos. Pinche he's gringos. Like patchy. And he's fucking naked. That was. Yeah. How many estimate estimate how many shows we did together just for fucking fun and laughs? Five hundred, a thousand? Five hundred, a thousand, man. We used to go up north. There was a Mexican up room up north. Not only that, but you've done shows that I've done that people probably never even heard of, like that room, man, in in, in uh, fuck, man. Since in um in Lebuke, Iowa. Whitey's boat, Whitey's boat, oh, billiards, shit. bro. That place is crazy. Dog, that was the, that's La Butte, Iowa. Yeah. It's the capital of fucking Met. Okay. <laughs> it's the capital of fucking Met. The first show we did was great because the parents were there. But when the second show started, there was, there was 300 people in the place, but only four people sat down and there was a line to go to the bathroom and Everybody was coked up. I wasn't doing coke then. Everybody was coked up. And I asked the fucking owner. I go, listen, there's only two flights out of here in the fucking morning. Because you got to connect from Iowa to Chicago. And then Chicago to Iowa, there's only two flights. One at like 8 in the morning and one at like 8 o'clock at night. I go, if you get fucked up tonight, I'm going to miss my fucking flight in the morning. I'm going to fucking kill you. And that motherfucker missed picking me up. I hunted him down. He came <laughs> and he did a hundred all the way to the fucking airport to get me there on time. And I remember he gave me some extra money for my fucking, uh, you know, pain yeah. and my fucking suffering. That was a hell of a room. He contacted me years later. I'm like, you're crazy. I never saw. And, you know, for the people at home, 27 years of doing coke. I never saw anything like that in my life. I never saw a place where there was 300 people 
and 290 of them were coked up. And I'm not talking coked up. I'm talking about talking, jaws going, cigarettes falling. Teeth. But lose he, just, teeth. He, he does lose pay teeth. you. He does pay you at the airport. As soon yeah. as you get to the airport, he gave me money and he goes, I'll bring you an eight ball later. I go, I don't even do the fucking coke. What about the club that we used to go to in, uh, with the magician? And he'd give you an eight ball of coke down in Midland, Texas. Oh, shit. That was his name. Uh, Jenkins. Jenkins. Holy shit. <laughs> I remember he gave us all an eight ball. Me, somebody else, and he was the host. Now, I'm a fiend, guys. You know, when I did coke, I was a fiend. Do you know that this guy came up to me before the second show was over and he goes, do you have any Coke left? I go, yeah. I go, what'd you do with your eight ball? He goes, I did it already. I go, how the fuck did you do an eight ball in two shows and go out on stage? I never could do Coke and go on stage. I did it one time when I first started, like uh, nine months in, and I'm like, it don't work for me. I would it would burn a hole in my pocket, Felipe. You know me. I would have that coke in my yeah. pocket. It would burn a hole in there. But I always waited to the end of the fucking show before I fucking did it. So what are that you gonna do? That was crazy, do? bro. That was that 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 bar. That was that guy. And then um, there was another guy that booked that show in, in um, Odessa where everybody went to prison. Yes. Midland, yes. Texas. The dog, I did so many shows where the guy would try to... I remember one night Marilyn called me. She's like, the guy's looking for you. She goes, go downstairs and get the Coke and then come up to my room. He gave me a bag of Coke. I remember the next day she called me. She goes, you coming to the airport? I go, are you fi kidding me? I didn't even finish the first bag yet. I still got the second bag to do and I had some Mexican chick in the room. It was fucking crazy. We lived a crazy <laughs> fucking life, Felipe. But thank you for calling thank in you, today. Bro. I miss you with all my heart. Give my best to Lisa. Uh, What's Up Fool comes out when? What's Up Fool podcast every Wednesday, 8 p.m. live on YouTube. This is what and, I'm talking uh, it comes about. Out every Friday. So when you come back to the East Coast, you call me, all right, brother? Give me a couple day notice so I can come and give you a hug because I miss you. And you were always very good to me. You were a dear friend. And I appreciate you because of that. Same here, bro. And, and I'll be, anybody listening, I'll be coming to um, Pittsburgh Improv in August. So look out for that. You know, I might be up there shooting a movie, so I'll keep you posted. Hell yeah. For Greg Hell Garcia yeah. TV show. I love you. Thank you for fucking calling me. You're going to the be there, bro. I'll bring you some King Tacos and you can eat them cold or microwave them. You got it. You got <laughs> it, Taksucker. I, I love, love you, man. You. Love you too. Thank you for today, brother. Thanks for having me. Thank you. Yeah, man. Yeah, man. All right, you bad motherfuckers. That was my man, Felipe. I hope you enjoyed it. I hope it was fucking long enough for you. Uh, listen, man, I have, uh, I'm getting better. I feel better thanks to you guys, you know. Like I said, I got the blood test today. I got my little stripe like Frankie Five Angels. Remember Godfather 2? Frankie Five Angels wore his fucking black thing for Clemenza. That's me. I, I'm wearing it. I'm wearing it for, I don't know who, a lot of people who passed away this year from COVID and whatnot. But anyway, I want to thank you guys for watching. I wanted you to thank you for your support. Uh, I still don't know what's going on in fucking Cuba. My, me and my cousin spoke, and uh, she was out of the fucking country. So she's like, I don't know what's going on. I'm trying to call. I'm not getting anything. So I don't know what's going on with my heart goes out to Cuba still. I haven't forgotten about you. And don't forget about fucking motherfucking laughing gas. It's still alive and kicking. It's kicking. This reef is kicking. I was telling Mike that I'm up to smoking joints now. So I smoked a joint last night of it. Like I, I would roll a joint and smoke it. And then, you know, it was just a half a joint. But the other night I had to smoke a half. And I'm like, wait a second. I can need some, you know, like when you fill a half a tank, and you're like, what am I doing? I need to fill it up to full. <laughs> that was what happened the other night. I had to come back in, roll another dube, and I smoked half of that. And then last night, I go, fuck it. I'm just going for the full fucking joint. But now that we got the freezer bombs, the freezer bongs and the freezer pipes, you're going to fucking love it. I love you guys to all, with all my heart. Don't forget to stop by 
ice cream shop dispensary up on Ventura Boulevard in Studio City. Stop by, say hello. They got ABX capsules. They got fucking laughing gas weed. They got everything there. You know, they got the best stuff there. I've been doing business with them for years. They're honest and their weed is fucking tremendous. You're going to love them. Besides that, thank you for sharing uh, a piece of your Wednesday with me. It's just an hour, but it is what the fuck it is. I'm appreciating this. I'm really having a great time doing this, and I'm happy you guys are having a great time also. Thank you very much. We'll be back Monday. Tip top motherfucking Magoo to rock your world, and uh, you're going to love it. That's all I got for you. Have a great weekend, and stay black cocksucker now for a word from my motherfucking sponsors, Jack. All right, cocksuckers, I want to thank you. I want to thank Felipe Esparza for coming on the show and I want to thank you guys for always supporting me in every fucking possible way whether it's laughing gas the NFTs the Patreon you guys are great or just listening to the joint I love you guys the joint is brought to you by Upstart let me ask you like I asked you in the beginning are you afraid to look at your credit card statement every month when you open it do you hear a drum roll in your head when you're in debt it could feel like a never ending fucking cycle listen I got into comedy in 97 I am captain fucking debt I know all about debt and how to get out of it, but this is tremendous. Whether it's paying off your credit cards or consolidating your debt, over a half a million people have used Upstart to get a simple fixed monthly payment. Unlike other lenders, Upstart looks at more than just your credit score. They take into account your income and employment history. This means they can offer you smarter rates with trusted partners. Do you understand? Just a five minute online rate check, that's all. And you get approved the same day. So if you go there today, you'll get approved today and you can receive the funds as quickly as fucking tomorrow. So by Friday, you can start paying off your, your stuff. If debt is taking over your life, it's time to get a fresh start with Upstart. Find out how Upstart can lower your monthly payments today when you go to upstart.com slash Joey today. That's upstart.com slash Joey. Don't forget to use the URL to let them know I sent you. You got to throw in, I got to throw this in the disclaimer. Loan amounts will be determined based on your credit, income, and certain other information provided in your loan applications. And now go to upstart.com slash Joey and get out of debt today. The joint is also brought to you by, holy shit, my favorite, Freeze Pipe. I told you in the beginning, for years, we have discussed how nice it is to put ice cubes in your bong, a little bit of snow in your bong, and smoke till you see the fucking devil. Smoking weed doesn't have to hurt your lungs at all. With Freeze Pipe, you can get an icy cold hit every fucking time. It comes with a detachable chamber. You freeze beforehand. Here's how it works. The smoke passes through the frozen part and cools down the smoke as you inhale. It's like putting ice cubes in a bong, but better. The coils are made with glycerin. It's non-toxic, freezes faster than water, and stays frozen longer. A lot fucking longer. Freeze pipe cools down the smoke by hundreds of degrees. Your throat will thank you. Whether you hit a pipe, a bubbler, a bong, or a dab, they got it all. I don't have the dab here. I got the pipe, the bubbler, and the bong. You see the, the pipe and the bubbler. I got the bong for Uncle Joey. You can't smoke from it. It's for me only. You can smoke from it freeze pipe makes it so do me a favor go to freezepipe.com right now freeze pipe f-e-r f-r-e-e-z-e -E -E, freezepipe.com and press code joey this is gonna be the best bong you ever bought remember that expensive bong i had in the office it was like 800 hours with 800 chamber this bong hits a lot better with the freeze pipe trust me so get your bong pipe or bubbler today that's freezepipe.com and pressing code joey i'm gonna save you 10 percent on a fucking bomb listen it's fucking f federal money anyway what are you gonna do with it you might as well buy the buy a bong and put a flag on it you know what i'm saying that's what a real american does so if you're gonna go into the murky waters do it with freeze pipe the bubbler the pipe or the bong that's freezepipe.com use code joey and get 10 percent off i want to thank freeze pipe i want to thank upstart i want to thank manscape i want to thank cbd lion i want to thank on i want to thank everybody for having our back this week but most importantly i want to thank you guys for supporting the joint 
Supporting the fucking reefer Supporting the Patreon You guys are fucking tremendous I love you cocksuckers Don't forget to get your freeze pipe At freezepipe.com And don't forget to get your debt eliminated With Upstart I love you guys See you Monday morning Tip top motherfucking Magoo There you go And don't forget Laughing gas at the ice cream shop Cocksuckers Stay black Have a great week Thank you for listening